Norman Malone never abandoned his dream of becoming a concert pianist, despite a violent attack by his father that left his right side paralyzed at the age of 10. The new Cartemquin documentary film, For the Left Hand, premiering tomorrow on WTTW, chronicles the Chicagoans' path from child prodigy to high school music teacher to his orchestral debut at age 79. Here's a clip in which Malone reflects on his feelings immediately after the attack that left him paralyzed. We couldn't move. Yeah, it was panic. Panic. Your ability to walk was gone. The ability to use your right hand was gone. I had to learn how to write. I had to learn how to pick up things. But I wanted to play piano. That's close. It became the force of survival. And play piano he did for The Left Hand is airing on WTTW this Friday at 9 p.m. And joining us now is the film's executive producer, Gordon Quinn, the co-founder of Cartem Quinn Films. Gordon, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. So Hi. early on in this film, Norman Malone, he describes that violent attack that he and his brothers suffered at the hands of his father. How did that affect his life and his passion for piano? You know, and I think it's important to understand his, his father suffered from mental illness. And, you know, Norman of the three of them was the one who was the least damaged but they were all hit in the right side on the left side. And so they all became paralyzed on the right side. And Norman really just had that drive through rehab, through, you know, getting back into the world, getting a music education and really finding teachers that would teach him with only the left hand. And then he found all this music that had been written specifically for their left hand. And so, you know, he kept practicing, even though he was very successful, uh, as a choir teacher for 35 years in the Chicago schools, which is one of the parts of the story that really attracted me. And he also seemed to, you know, to keep this traumatic event private for a while, even from his own son. Um, as you were making this film with him, was it difficult to get him to open up about it? You know, the the we came into the film after uh, Howard Reich and Zbigniew had done this major series in the Tribune. Howard has since retired from the Tribune, but they were the ones that did those early, uh, you know, interviews with Norman. But I think, you know, when you get older, I'm just a few years younger than Norman, you sort of become more willing to share certain kinds of traumatic things in your life. Okay. Um, for the left hand, we should, of course, clarify, it refers to uh, left hand repertoire, music that is written yeah. uh, to be performed with just the left hand. And from what I understand, uh, right hand music is, is less likely just because of the way the piano is, is made. Um, yeah. But what unique challenges did Norman have to performing? Well, I mean, everybody knows you play the piano with two hands. Uh, and a lot of people when he was young when he was you know just struggling to get back to learning the piano and, and find a teacher people thought he was crazy you know and, and took him to a psychiatrist he talks about that in the film but i think what he found was that little by little he discovered all of this music some by very famous composers that had been written specifically for the left hand and actually when he got into DePaul and and finally wrote his thesis it's about Wittgenstein who commissioned a lot of this early music and the piece that Norman is so intensely uh, involved with, which is the Ravel Concerto for the left hand. And that's the piece we see him working on and working on through the course of the film. And eventually at the end of the film, it's designed to be played with an orchestra. And I was doing good. They say, don't give away the ending. <laughs> yeah, they gotta watch, they gotta watch the movie if they wanna know. Yeah, he, he plays with an orchestra uh, and it's a big deal. And, you know, Norman is a very determined and a very brave guy that he, you know, he's invited to perform now. He's performed at a lot of the screenings of the film that we've been doing at film festivals and places like that. He performed at the Siskel Center as part of the Chicago International Film Festival after the screening of the film. 
Oh, wow, that's a bonus to get a, a screening of the film and a, a performance uh, by yeah. the main character. So as you mentioned, he went on to become a public school teacher. Several former students reunited in the film. We were just looking at a few, uh, a little bit of video of that. How do students remember him in his class? Um, you know, they what you're seeing is the film. They've come together to do a concert in his honor. And you see him getting involved in their rehearsal and everything. You know, at first he's sitting on the sideline and then little by little he's right there, you know, directing them. Uh, and they give this concert. But we've also been seeing it at the screenings that we've been having at film festivals. Uh, and I'm sure you'll hear about it when it when it happens on, on PBS that, you know, his students come out of the word work. And he changed many of their lives, you know, and meant so much to, to them, both in terms of because of his passion for music and also the role that he played as a mentor and, and kind of a role model for them. So um, we have a clip of Norman speaking to composer Reginald uh, Robinson, who wrote a left hand piece for Norman. Here's a bit of that. As a child, I played church organ. I would play for uh, mass. But then uh, the pastor was a new pastor. And he said, oh, you're the crippled one. And I thought, whoa. I didn't know how to respond to something like that. Yeah. No one had ever said that. I said, well, I never touched the organ again. Yeah. Reginald's piece is contributing to the feel of left-hand repertoire, which is so needed. So I have to live up to my part. Now the film follows him, obviously fulfilling his dream of becoming a concert pianist. What was it like to witness that transformation? And you know, I know that you mentioned that he's been performing at screenings of the film. Is he planning to continue performing? Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, he he and actually in the he, you know, he he went to New Haven and performed with a community orchestra there, and they actually invited him back uh, a few years later, and you also see that in the film. I mean, it's, you know, he's like many performers, he's incredibly nervous before the performance uh, and extremely happy when it's over, but he's really pleasing audiences, and I think just doing something that has so much meaning for, for him. You know, Norman's passion is music and you see him he, he he's either playing music practicing music or he's going to other people's concerts and performances that's kind of what his his life revolves around uh you you know you guys mentioned the woodson library earlier and we used that library for some very important research for our earlier film 63 boycott which you guys showed a few years ago Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you for bringing that uh, full circle. Yes, I, I'm aware of that film. Uh, that's where we'll have to leave it. It is an amazing, uh, amazing story. Gordon Quinn, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Thanks. And again, you can watch For the Left Hand on WTTW tomorrow, Friday at 9 p.m.